So today we will talk about sensors. Not so much how they work, what they do, but where they should be located to have the best possible signal acquisition on the machine. For this, I have my colleague with me, which is Wolfgang. He, has, he comprises 25 years of field service experience, and he will share his knowledge with you in his best practices on sensor locations on reciprocating machinery. Yeah, what I have prepared here is a simplified cross-section drawing of a reciprocating compressor. We see here the flywheel behind the crankcase. Inside the crankcase, the crankshaft that drives the connecting rod. Here, the crosshead, which moves inside the crosshead guide. Then, the piston rod and the piston. Here, we have got the cylinder with the suction valves and the discharge valves. Now, <coughs> to monitor all the online signals, the dynamic online signals of the sensors that I'm going to explain now, um, we need to reference them to the top dead center of the cylinder. And to obtain this, what we do is we install a trigger cam, a trigger mark at the flywheel, and here a trigger sensor, which is then installed at the support. And this trigger cam passes or the trigger, passes, the trigger cam passes the trigger once per revolution. And this not only gives all the reference point to the top dead center, to all the signals, but also the RPM of the machine. <clears throat> According to the API, we can install velocity sensors at the crank case here in the horizontal orientation, one at the drive end side, one at the non-drive inside. With these velocity sensors, we can detect, for example, unbalances of the whole compressor. We can detect loose mechanical connections of the crankcase to the foundation or even cracks in the foundation. Here we see the crosshead. The crosshead is one of the most critical components in the drivetrain of a reciprocating compressor because it turns the rotating movement of the crankshaft into a reciprocating movement of the piston rod and the pistons. And this crosshead is supposed to, to move like this inside the crosshead guide. In case it moves like this and bangs to the upper or to the lower crosshead guide, this indicates, for example, loose mechanical connections between the crosshead and the piston rod or the piston rod the piston. It might indicate liquid slugs, broken rider rings, or any mechanical disintegrity. The location of the acceleration sensor at the crosshead guide depends on the rotating direction of the crankshaft. That means the connecting rod only also applies vertical forces to the, to the crosshead guide, meaning if we have a clockwise rotating direction, we would recommend to install the acceleration sensors in this way. This crosshead guide below the crosshead guide and here on top of the crosshead guide. In case the rotating direction is counterclockwise, of course, we would install the sensors in the, the other way around, provided that sufficient clearance is available beneath the crosshead guides. At the packing, we install a proximity sensor. This proximity sensor measures the distance between the sensor tip and the piston rod. And usually two different analyses are carried out based on, based on the signal. One is the wear of the rider bands, number one. Number two is related to the machine protection. The piston rod here, the piston rod not only moves in the horizontal direction, like this, due to the forces or mechanical looseness, it also has a vertical displacement. And this vertical displacement system, systems can pick up either after each turn of the shaft and um, uh, protect the machine accordingly. <clears throat> now we come to the components of the reciprocating compressors, with, which statistically account for most of the problems that are the valves suction valves, discharge valves. 
to monitor all the valves of one cylinder, we recommend to install one acceleration sensor in the middle between the valves at the head inside and crank inside, close to the suction nozzle, nozzle. And with this acceleration sensor, we can pick up all impacts caused by the valves and also anomalies, like, for example, clock valves, like sticking valves, meaning late closing valves, or broken valve plates. In order to measure and determine the performance of the compressor, we install dynamic pressure sensors at each compression chamber of the cylinder. And the access to the compression chamber is usually done by an existing indicator port. API compressors usually have indicator ports. If these indicator ports are not possible, uh, not existent, it is also possible to modify the suction valves in a way with a, for example, with a valve kit, with an indicator kit, in a way that the middle bolt of the valve will be replaced by a modified one, which has a perforation through the middle bolt, and then through this perforation, the pressure sensors get access to the compression chamber and the dynamic pressure. Thank you very much for this. Um, I think this explains very much how sensors should be located on a machine. Um, one final question from my side, um, what about wireless technology in this uh, regards? Um, is it possible, does it make sense, or is it uh, even um, common already to monitor reciprocating machinery with wireless sensors? Yeah. yeah, recently we have received frequent questions regarding wireless sensors because it looks quite attractive to uh, save cost on the field wiring. However, there are two, let's say, two basic reasons, reasons why we do not recommend wireless sensors. One is that, uh, let's say, the proper machine protection and monitoring you would do with an online system. And wireless sensors, they send only signals in a defined interval. That means this is not an online monitoring, online protection, which is then based on each revolution. This is number one. Number two is the data rate of all the, the sensors. That means the amount of data that are picked up with, a, for example, a sampling rate of 25 kilohertz, that would account for an estimated uh, or more than two terabyte per day, and this is more than difficult to transmit with wireless sensors. Okay, thank you for this. Mm -hmm. So um, this episode will uh, close with um, Hopefully some good takeaways for you. Please be so free and uh, share your comments in the section below, like us, and let us know what you would like to learn here on intelligent machine monitoring. <laughs>